I'm Steve McGuire. I'm the Paul and Karen Levy Fellow in Campus Freedom. I work on ACTA's Campus Freedom Initiative, and I spend a lot of my time reading and writing about free expression issues on campuses around the country. So I've always been a minority voice, even when I was a student. Um, and I was always the kind of student who was willing to speak up. I didn't have a problem doing that. Went through grad school, became a professor. Of course, as a professor, it's different. I want to teach the materials in a way that is faithful to the materials and isn't necessarily about expressing my views, but is about showing the students a variety of views that people have on those materials and then welcoming them to think about them uh, and to you know sort of offer up, up their viewpoints. That went very well for the first several years of my career as a professor, but in recent years I've noticed that something has changed and it's become increasingly difficult for me to say anything that I would want to say about certain topics in the classroom. For example, if you're talking about a classic text like Plato's Republic, he brings up issues related to things like sex and gender. And in the past, I never had a problem bringing those topics up. Students never had a problem talking about it and expressing different views, relating it to issues that are alive in society today. Now what I see increasingly is that students don't want to talk when those kinds of issues come up. The, the classroom goes quiet. If anything is said that doesn't fit certain narratives, you can feel the tension in the room. People are not perhaps wondering, how's this going to go? You know, what's he going to say, meaning me as the professor? What are other people going to say? So I, I feel like there's a, there's a tension that things have become politically charged, that people are afraid to speak. Um, I don't always know why that is. But of course, I've seen increasing problems in terms of free speech on campus in general, not just in the classroom, but in terms of bringing speakers to campus. At Villanova, we brought Charles Murray a few years ago. Um, close to 150 of my colleagues signed a letter denouncing the Ryan Center for inviting Charles Murray to campus. They, in that letter, acknowledged that the policies at Villanova explicitly state that bringing somebody to campus doesn't mean that you agree with what they're going to say. I mean, it would be absurd to hold people to that kind of standard. How many people could you not invite to campus if you could only invite people that you agreed with and if you were responsible for everything that they said? We brought Charles Murray to campus to speak about something completely different than the things that he's especially controversial for. So he wasn't even there to talk about those things. But the fact that he had said those things back in the 90s was enough for some of my colleagues to say he should not be allowed to speak about anything on a university campus. Uh, but also, a university campus is a place where you're supposed to hear a variety of ideas and be able to challenge those ideas. You can agree with them if you agree with them. You can disagree if you disagree. And even if you disagree with somebody, you might learn something from them. You might not agree with their conclusion, but they might say something in the course of their argument towards that conclusion where you think, hey, actually, maybe he has a point there. Um, you know, being able to hone your own skills of debate by engaging with somebody that you disagree with. When you go out into the world, you're going to find people that disagree with you. <laughs> and you're going to have to be able to interact with those people, and hopefully do so in a productive way, right? Or a way where you can still respect one another and in a certain sense live together, even as fellow citizens, even though you disagree profoundly about things that are really important to you. It was a big deal. The event got moved to a different venue. 
Local police were brought in. We had protesters who tried to disrupt the event. Uh, they started with a silent protest. When they were removed from the building, they got a bullhorn and tried to push in through one of the windows to yell into the room while he was speaking with a bullhorn. Somebody set off stink bombs in the room. The event did eventually go on and we were able to hold it, um, but it was extremely disruptive. The university released a statement saying that they supported freedom of expression, but then the next week we received a security bill for over $10,000, which I had never heard of before um, and had never seen happen again since. Maybe it has and I don't know about it, but it was certainly irregular. We wrote to the provost and explained that this would be setting a bad precedent and you know, he did say, well, we will pay the bill. But nevertheless, the first um, step was to send us the bill for security, which obviously has a chilling effect on speech. So the centerpiece of the Campus Freedom Initiative is ACTA's gold standard for freedom of expression, which is a 20 point set of principles, policies, and practices that universities can adopt that will promote a climate that is favorable for freedom of expression on campus. And ultimately what we want on our college and university campuses is a culture of free expression where people understand the importance and the value of freedom of expression, that they expect to be able to express themselves freely and they expect to hear other people expressing themselves freely. But that culture also needs to be supported. You need these principles, these policies, you need the institutional support. A culture like that doesn't just come out of nowhere. So I think there is a kind of natural tendency to learn to live in a certain way and learn to think in a certain way and then want to continue thinking and living in that way. And so when you're confronted by something that doesn't fit with that, your natural reaction might be negative. You might want to push that away. You might want to not engage that. But when you're on a university campus, what you're supposed to do is think critically to engage other ideas. And I think that's important too in terms of one of the core functions that our universities have, which is to help prepare people for citizenship in a democratic republic, where you're going to have to argue with people about political issues that will have a real effect on your life. And there will be people who want one policy and you will want the exact opposite. And sometimes you might win, sometimes you might lose, but you're still going to be fellow citizens in the same country. And, you know, I'm worried that, you know, we hear increasing talk about people not being able to do that. Well, I think the ultimate goal is the positive vision that we have for our colleges and universities, which have a variety of functions, right? They are complex institutions. The pursuit of truth is one of their purposes. Preparing students for careers is one of their purposes. Preparing students for citizenship is one of their purposes. And I think free expression is essential to all of those. If you're going to pursue truth, you need to be able to ask questions. And we increasingly live in an environment in which there are certain questions that you can't ask. Right? You're going to need to be able to express a diversity of views so that those views can clash with one another and you can see where it leads. Follow the argument wherever it leads. Right? We have to give up control over the outcome of the argument. Right? It, it's, People want to feel safe. They want to have security, right? They want to have control over their situation. But when you enter into, say, a philosophical argument, I think what you need to do is you need to do your best to try to relinquish that control, to give up that sense of security that we naturally want to have. And you have to turn yourself over to the argument and let it go wherever it leads. 
I think we have a hard time understanding that politics is about disagreements that are probably ultimately not going to be resolved. They're not going to be resolved in the sense that everybody's going to agree. If you live in a democratic society, you know, of course we have protections for, for minorities, the, you know, uh, the Bill of Rights, et cetera, but you're governing your country via majorities and you're not always going to be in the majority. And the challenge is to, you know, to be committed to a democratic republic, you have to be able to say, I know I'm not going to win all the time, and yet I still support this system. And so political questions are perennial questions in many cases. There, pro there are problems in politics that will never be resolved. That's what politics is in a certain sense. And so we have to be prepared to understand that. And one of the places where we can become prepared to understand that is when we go to college and university. Of course, many Americans don't go to college and university. There's other places where we learn this or need to learn this as well. But colleges and universities have this similarity to the political sphere where it's a place where we go to debate, it's a place where we go to ask questions, um, maybe even to solve problems. And so when you learn to debate or to inquire in a certain way during your college or university education, you're probably going to carry that forward with you when you go out into your future job or your community or you know, just your general um, activities as a citizen. So Act as Gold Standard for Freedom of Expression is a 20-point plan. Most colleges and universities in America are not close to meeting all of those 20 points. To get there is going to be a long-term goal for a lot of institutions. But there are several points in the Gold Standard that any institution can easily reach if they have the will to do it. For example, adopting the Chicago Principles. A number of schools have already done that in the United States. It's very easy to do. Another example is including some programming about freedom of expression during a new student orientation. When students first come to college and they have that several days or week-long orientation, that sets the tone. That tells them what kind of institution and what kind of community they're entering. Every single college and university should be communicating to their students that this is a place where we ask questions, this is a place where we listen to other people speak, this is a place where we try to pursue the truth. Even if we can't actually arrive at the truth, we set it as a goal. Those are easy steps. There are others that are perhaps a little bit more difficult, but are essential. One would be removing any kind of political litmus tests from hiring processes for faculty. If you're going to have a campus community where people feel like they can freely pursue the argument wherever it leads, you need to have freedom of expression, but you also need to see that a diversity of views and intellectual approaches are respected. And you can do that by building that into your hiring processes and making it a goal. So that in a department you have a variety of different approaches, uh, people who think differently about things and can model that for their students and their students can take classes with different faculty members and get different angles on the subject matter. So those are a few of the key examples that I think you know, the first two in particular, that any university could adopt quite easily. Um, whereas there are some other ones that, you know, will require time and effort, but they should want to get there because it will make their campuses better.